Welcome to Fridays with Anne. This is a series of conversations with Belgian homeopath Anne Fafake about homeopathy. I will ask her curiously whatever confuses me in homeopathy, like case taking, case analysis, or theory in general. And Anne will answer according to her insights, experience, and most recent findings. You, the viewer, are invited to participate actively, so please feel free to send in comments and questions. For more information on Anne and her work, please follow these links, which will also be posted below every video. And now today's episode of Fridays with Anne. Hello, this is Fridays with Anne, and I welcome you, Anne. Hello, yes. Um, on last Friday, we had a chat about the vital information, finding the vital information in a, in a case and talking about the importance of discerning what in a case is vital to, in order to find the right prescription for the patient. And you gave an example of a, um, of how to see vital information on a physical level and this is something that we've also learned in our trainings hopefully and mm -hmm. um, to pay attention to the uh, symptoms that uh, don't belong to a physical pathology because they are the strange or peculiar symptoms and are the important symptoms for our prescription mm -hmm. as opposed to general um, symptoms that belong to a pathology that several people can have. So now I would like to ask you to um, explain to us how can we discern, how can we know that information is vital on the other levels, like the functional level, the emotional level, the mental level, and so on? Uh -huh. Very good question. <laughs> um, and I think the most difficult level is the emotional level. Mental level, we, we have the delusions, we have the intense fears. Mm -hmm. I think this point more or less directly to uh, rubrics and, and remedies. But um, the emotional level or the level of the story, you know, very often we don't know what to do with it. And, yeah. and often there are the, the biggest part of the interview. because that Exactly, is, yeah. And we've kind of been um after all this this uh, introduction of yeah the emotional this, this kind of was the was the way it was the phase for a while you know that the emotional symptoms were so important but then they are so general and they, they are so unreliable and everybody interprets them in a in another way so yeah what is your your experience with this yeah, that's it. I see it's a difficulty for uh, at least uh, I've seen a lot of students struggle with it, and uh, also uh, I say uh, I would say uh, more experienced homeopaths what to do mm -hmm. with all this what we call story, and, and the story is what the patient likes to tell to you. And last talk last Friday we talked a lot about the personality that mm -hmm. we don't make prescriptions on the personality, the personality traits of the patient have to be taken into consideration to to see him on on the on this on this theater of his life in his life mm -hmm. so how, what kind of person is living these stories and yeah. they seem so general at the first glance so we have to be um very alert to see what in all this common is strange and peculiar because homeopathy is nothing but uh, nothing but discerning the strange and peculiar on all levels that is mm -hmm. actually what we're doing but how can you do this in the story well there are different points i can uh, talk a little bit about to clarify where you can see vital hints in all this data you get, in all these yeah. notes, uh, where is the information that is useful to you? And I think we, we already um, pointed last time to the repetition, so the surprise in, uh, 
in in the case when when you get something unexpected yes mm -hmm. surprised, that's one thing eh? yeah. and one surprise could be or after a while could be um, remarkable to you that the patient is keeping or, or keeps repeating the same thing I mean the same conclusion his stories and his events might be different but his conclusion or his feeling could be the same and that is what I would call the message in the story the story is the example is the image uh, is the, the happening but how the patient experienced the happening is the message in the story and I always say the example is very important even if it seems trivial you ask yourself why does he tell me this? Why did the patient wait for three months uh, for, before he could get an appointment? Or why did he travel for 200 kilometers to tell me this? Yeah. Only this means that the example is precisely chosen because it contains the vital. Mm. So that's something reliable. The examples contain the vital always. Otherwise, the patient wouldn't wouldn't tell you. He has millions of things he can choose uh, from. And he picks out a few examples. So these examples are always precisely chosen because it is containing the vital information the patient doesn't know. But you know, as a homeopath, mm -hmm. that only the choice of examples is a hint. And if the patient doesn't add it um, himself as a conclusion, Mm -hmm. uh, like in this happening, that is how I felt. Then you can ask me, okay, I understand. You had a quarrel with your mother in law, and you know, she's a very bossy woman. Da, 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 dee, da, da, da. How do you feel in this situation? How is it for you to feel to be in this situation? She can say, oh, she makes me angry, she goes on my nerves, I can't stand the woman. Okay, great, but how do you feel? How is it for you to have to deal with a person like this and you can't escape from her, you know, she's, she's family, she's the mother of your husband, whatever. How do you feel in this situation? Were you made angry by her behavior? Eh? And yeah. that's a direct question to the vital. If the patient doesn't tell it spontaneously, because very often they do. Right. But wouldn't they also... Um, it could also happen that they would just... Um, because for, for many people it's, or for all people, it's not normal to talk about, to explore deeper or to, to not only deeper, but to, to be more different, to differentiate better between their, their feelings or their emotions. Couldn't it also be that um, when you ask, how did you feel in the situation? And they would just say, I was angry or mm -hmm. I felt... I felt um, not appreciated, or I felt not, uh, I was sad. Yes, that's what most patients would answer if you ask them the question, how did you feel? Because they give you feelings. Mm. You ask for feelings, you get feelings. But it's also a little bit in the language, because we've seen all these Indian cases, etc., and, and they ask for the experience. Now, in Dutch, it is sounds very odd if you ask for the experience. I don't know how it sounds uh -huh. in German. Oh, so funny. Uh -huh. Funny, yeah. You don't ask, what did you experience when no. your mother no, is, is bossy? That would sound strange. So you ask for feeling, but we have, in our language, you could say you have feelings on level three, level four, level five. And as a homeopath, mm -hmm. you should know uh, from what level the patient is uh, answering. So if he says, or if she says, I'm angry, I'm sad, that's level three, right? These yeah. are very common um, human feelings that we all have. And these are exactly the feelings you can expect in such a situation. So nothing you can do with this. It's common and it's it's like only level three, right? Yeah. But, mm -hmm. So that's why it's a stepping stone to ask the next question. Like, mm -hmm. Being angry or being irritated of with this sadness because you can't change the situation or whatever. 
how is it for you to be in this situation that makes you sad? Ah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. so then you take the feelings, you include the feelings in the story and go to the next level with them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And that's exactly what you said. People are not used to think further or to delve deeper or to verbalize it. So they might have to think a little bit. Mm -hmm. Like, I, 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 I don't know, I can't. I, I'm, I, yeah, I can't change it. I, I don't have the power to influence them or whatever. You know? mm -hmm. And either I can't or I miss or she should, eh? then you get hints. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so, Kingdoms, hmm? and right. if they keep repeating the feeling, and whatever you ask, and whatever example, the feeling comes up again and again and again, and it's a plant. Right. So plants feel on level three, but they also feel on level four, and they feel on level five. It's mm -hmm. difficult to express, but the plant is the feeling. The plant doesn't have the feeling. The plant is the feeling, and that's the difference. Like they feel in their body, they feel in the heart, and they feel in their soul the same thing. Mm. And we confuse this with superficial, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. that everybody has. But it's like that. A plant feels in its soul, and that's why you get nothing but feelings. Yeah. This is vital, and mm -hmm. it's the same feeling happens because the feeling is first the happening comes later all right so this gives us an idea um of how we can listen for the message in the story the patient is telling and that gives us a a clue about the vital in the story can you tell us other pointers other hints yes there are a few more hints i can give because mm -hmm. here is where the context come in the context of the consultation is um, very important and there are many aspects to that eh? like a word that the patient uses is meaningless if you don't have the context you don't know if the word is dropped as a common word and a common expression uh, mm -hmm. you don't know what level it is um, if, if you don't see it in the context and the the word used by this person might mean a completely different thing than when it's used by another person, right? Mm -hmm. so that's part of the context. You have to always take into consideration that the expressions of the patients, the words of the patient, have to be seen in the whole context. Who is telling you what and when? <laughs> yeah, yes. I give uh -huh. some examples. Um, for instance, saying you what when is and that's something you have to like train yourself to be list to to pick this up is when a patient says something in an illogical sequence mm -hmm. uh, for instance i once had a boy a patient a, a nine-year-old boy or something with kind of severe asthma and after we uh, explored all that and he had a, a, like a strange feeling, like he felt like his his throat was like like beaten when he had this asthma, which is mm -hmm. already very strange. But when he asked, when I asked uh, about his fears, he said that he was afraid of burglars. I said, yeah, burglars. You know, that's a very common fear. So you ask, why are you afraid of burglars? And he said, um, well, they come in, in the house and, um, and they kill you, they steal, they kill you and they beat you up. And I thought, after they killed you, beat you up, that is very strange. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This sequence is illogical. You can say, yeah, it's a child, he's not logical. No, 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 no. You know, <laughs> it, <laughs> it's vital. Uh -huh. that he has to add the beating up because you know he needed uh, an injury remedy eh? he, he got camomilla. but anyway this illogical sequence is so important mm -hmm. it's not by accident it's not a coincidence mm -hmm. 
the sensitivity was for being beaten up or being beaten. And usually that is not what burglars do. You know, they, they do steal. They come into your house and sometimes they might be um, threatened uh, by somebody and then they might kill you. That's yeah. mm -hmm. what people would be afraid of. They have a weapon or they would kill you. But being beaten, that is a very strange thing of being afraid of after they already killed you. So <laughs> that was important. Another. And would you ask to confirm? Would you kind of ask also so they steal and they kill and then they beat you up? No, no because they, they might then, um, how do you say, repeat it in a, in a different sequence mm -hmm. because they might realize and then you start to. You start to doubt, mm -hmm. yeah, symptom. But of course, you you stay alert for the word to come back or synonym or something that has to do with beaten up. And it right. come back, and it was already the second time since since he already had the feeling in the in the physical symptoms, and now he had it in his mental level. So great. Yeah. Need. And you know, it's not only a flip of the tongue or of the brain or whatever. <laughs> yeah. No, as I told you, examples are never by accident. Mm -hmm. Never, never, never. Uh, for instance, another case I recall was a woman who had um, uh, an accident as well. She fell off the stairs at night. It was dark, uh -huh. she fell off the stairs. And, you know, she was um, lying on the floor, she said, and of course she was, uh, you know, uh, in shock, and she said, "You know, I was lying there. I wasn't sure if, um, if 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 I broke something. Maybe I broke my neck. I don't know. My blood pressure went up, and um, I didn't know what to do. And I started to call, to to yell uh, because my son was in the house. And I thought your blood pressure went up. <laughs> what? You, you're not sure if you broke your neck, and you're worried about your blood pressure. Mm -hmm. That is so strange." Mm -hmm. So if somebody else would talk about the blood pressure in another situation, you wouldn't even mention it. Mm -hmm. You think, okay, he's a bit worried about his blood pressure. But this woman, at that moment, like you, you don't even know when you're paralyzed for the rest of your life. Who cares yeah. about blood pressure? So the blood pressure becomes the, the main thing. It has to come back. It mm -hmm. has to be something. And that's the context. It's not the blood pressure itself. It's the the... the, the Instant, she mentioned it. That not even that she thought about it, but that she tells me a year later that she thought about it. Yeah, it was a digitalist case, but that that's not a coincidence that the digitalist would mention a thing like that. Yeah. Mm, okay. Okay. So that's again is very important in the story. It's the moment that people drop this little bit of information. When it comes to the illogical sequence at a strange place and a very unexpected, mm -hmm. or why do you think it's unnecessary? Why do they say this? It's it's yeah. your in unnecessary detail. No, it's vital. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. That's also a bit what I mean with the huh, you know the surprise that they did mm -hmm. something so insignificant seemingly. Yeah makes it the more significant thing they said. And another thing sometimes, what a patient would do is, and usually they do it at the end of the case, I don't know why, uh, when you already made up your mind, but yeah. when you give, and when you're tired of you know listening uh, with this intensity for one hour and a half or two hours, and yeah. then you Something like, for instance, what do you like to do? And, you know, you like to swim. Oh, yeah, well, tell me about swimming. And then, all of a sudden, you get this whole chapter. <laughs> <laughs> they give you this explanation of how they swim and how the water is making them weightless and how they like to you know, move in the water with all the trees and how the boundaries between them and the water dissolve their feeling of. You go like what is this? <laughs> this is vital. <laughs> they gave so much explanation of something that you know that you didn't expect to be important. That is to to attract your attention. Like this is vital. Listen. Mm. And this is also tricky. Then if you have already settled for a remedy and it might not fit with what you've 
what you settled for. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. For instance, I recall another case. I think this was goldfish. Carasius. Carasius. Um, she. Um, what are you afraid of? What are your fears? You know, it's mm -hmm. going towards the end of the case, and uh, she's afraid of this and that and fish. What? <laughs> Who's afraid of fish? And if it's a shark, we understand. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so you asked fish, yeah, and she said, um, yeah, the, the, the small fish, oh, small fish, she said, you, you, you know, this slippery little small fish that is all around your feet when you, when you, when you, when you, when you, when you feed in the water. I mean, you ever had it? No, and no fish normally comes so close, huh? Fish usually don't. I mean, she was not talking about this this therapeutic little fish eating mm. the spoils of your psoriasis. She was talking about going into the water, being afraid of all these swarming little fish around her feet. And all details, what they do and how they feel, and she felt the shivers uh, uh, on her spine. Well, that makes it strange and peculiar, not only the fear is strange, but also the, the experience that she was describing having these creatures or, you know, so that was something that you, um, how to say, by the, the length and the detail and the intensity of the, of the, of the picturing of this particular detail made it mm. important. And that's also context that, you know, you have these sh relatively short explanations of very intense things, and then something trivial comes up, and they talk for five minutes uh -huh. without stopping and describing something you never heard before. There are a lot of people, for instance, have dreams of flying. A lot of people like to fly. Yeah, you ask, ah, oh, flying, tell me about flying, right? And yeah. you say, hmm, it's freedom. And we think it's birds. No, it's not. It's, it's a mental picture. It's a symbol. Yeah, birds are, birds fly and there are symbols of freedom. But if you ask a patient, you have dreams of flying? Yes. Uh, or they say they have dreams of flying, tell me more. And, and they say, well, in my dreams I can fly. I said, okay, can you describe it? And then off they go. You know, then they will explain you exactly how they fly not how they think about flies not these mental constructions but they start flying in your office so to speak they will talk about this this wind that they feel or this height and they can see everything below or i even have seen patients who say you know i can do all kinds of movements, you know, like an acrobat, and even I fly low between the houses and I could go in the houses and out the houses, you know. <laughs> like what I can do. Some fly low, some fly high. Some uh -huh. <laughs> this is yeah. a canary bird, by the way. And uh, uh, which? A canary? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. Who was explaining that flying low actually and in and out of the houses. Uh, uh -huh. Which usually they don't do, but the domesticated birds uh, mm -hmm. can expect uh, other uh, behavior as they're fam familiar with people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So this explanation doesn't become a mental picture, but becomes an experience that they are actually in at the moment they are explaining it to you. And that's also context. You cannot see this on paper. You have to see this in front of your eyes. Yeah, uh -huh, exactly. Yeah. Okay, this is a topic for a for a different uh, Friday. Mm -hmm. uh, the analysis of paper cases, but it's yeah, yes. mm -hmm, I understand. Mm -hmm. It's I often have the impression also that uh, just following this uh, thread, I often have the impression in a case that just feeling. Um, an intensity of how the patient is describing this is more important information and this is not so important information yes. yeah. and this is also something that just doesn't come across 
on, on paper and... Uh, no, you can't put it down on paper, but normally in a consultation you feel like you're a little bit on, like in front of your seat, you know, like, you know, you come a bit closer because now this is important. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's also complex. You don't know how you know, but you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right, so these are a few hints that you gave us to make use of the story of a large part of the of the consultation that we were you kind of normally were kind of disappointed that the patient was giving us only emotions or story or background information yeah uh, would you like to add something to this is there something uh, left on this yes there's something left. Like we do have patients who don't tell us much right uh-huh <laughs> Because often we complain we have too much story, you know, too much information, and we yeah. don't know what to do with it, and we have to, you know, pick out the right things that I try to explain, which is vital, this is vital, this is vital, so this will all add to the complete pattern of the patient's picture. Yeah. But some, some people don't tell much, you know, they're very reserved, and they give you very short answers, mm -hmm. and you, you feel like you don't have a good rapport with them, yeah. they're not very warm people, you know, as a homeopath we tend to feel a little bit uneasy with them. Yes. Uh -huh. Because we're afraid that they won't give us what we need to prescribe, so they make us uncertain, and we think they're closed, so we won't see the deepest, or we, they won't have, have us, um, they won't allow us to look inside. Yeah. Um, and we're afraid we're going to end up with a pathology prescription yeah that they only can prescribe on something clinical etc yeah. but i use i usually send the students <laughs> thank <laughs> god for, for patients like that <laughs> thank god for patients who don't say much because uh -huh. everything they say you can use everything mm. it can take two hours and you can have only two pages okay yeah uh -huh. so slow the silence is in between you have to think about your next question uh, mm -hmm. and the patient is patiently waiting for you to ask something because he doesn't know what you want mm -hmm. and so he's helpful in a way that he doesn't talk while you're thinking right and then he answers and the answer will always be what you need what else can it be there is no way you can hide yourself so even if there's only two or three things that you say, I might use this as a rubric, fine. Combine them, that's your remedy. Right. And again, I can only demonstrate this with cases, but we did this. Mm -hmm. and the students are at a loss, and I said, but be grateful. Uh, all your notes, or everything you wrote down is useful. If you combine this, you have your remedy. That's all there is to it, and that's a vital prescription. Mm -hmm. Um, does this, do these types of patients pertain to a particular group or can they be from any kingdom group or whatever in your experience? Yeah, I would be surprised if this would be a plant, honestly speaking. Uh -huh. <laughs> because they tend to talk a lot, even if they're compensated, you would somehow see what they try not to feel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, okay. Plant cases, they don't show their emotions, but then there's so much suppression. And this is suppression that then you observe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The emotionality that is obviously there and so strong that they need to suppress it so much. So there will be a denial or there will be a, a strong suppression if somebody says, I don't have fears, I don't have dreams, you know, there must be a lot of suppression. Mm -hmm. But then still, you feel it, still it's there. But with other patients, it could be, it could be, basically it could be any kingdom, but I would expect it more in, maybe in, let's say, in general, second yeah. dimension cases, uh -huh. doctor second and third dimension, so I would expect it more in second dimension cases, and um, we will talk more about gemstones, gemstones on a, another uh, Friday, yes. but, um, Gemstones have this overall attitude, if I can tell it, 
that way, to be that way, of being a like, little bit, um, you could say, like hard and impenetrable. You, mm -hmm. you can't get through it. it it's now like it's, it's smooth, okay? but it's like water, water that's running off a duck. Uh -huh. Yeah. Like, uh -huh. like you can't get through. While at the same time, they answer your questions, which is not always the case. I told you before. That's also the context of the interview. If a person answers your question, it's more likely to belong to the second dimension. And if you answer your question in stories and images, it's more likely to belong to the third dimension. So they answer your questions like second dimension cases do, but it's like they don't give you more than the necessary. And the answers they give to you are, um, are showing their feelings, but without emotionality, without right. this emotional load on it. Yeah. They're mm -hmm. talking about it, but not like being really emotionally. They don't talk emotionally about it. Yeah. Exactly. They talk about their emotions and kind of short. Uh -huh. yeah. Like a matter of the fact, like. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So then you will have like, I don't get much. I don't get much information. They don't tell me much. They're kind of a little bit reluctant to talk to. They make you a bit uneasy because of this heart um, almost shiny eh? um, uh, outside behavior. It's not very uh, inviting, mm -hmm. but still, they're open-hearted in what they tell you. The, the information they give is about their real feelings. They're not hiding their feelings. They don't make it any, any more beautiful than it is. Mm -hmm. yeah. so that could be like little information, but by the context enough, because it's the behavior of a gem first, yeah. mm -hmm. and then the information they give you is all you need to prescribe on. Mm. Okay, so this is um, something to deal with um, patients who don't talk much. Yeah. Have you, just to uh, wrap it up, have you also had patients who kind of are uh, offended or refuse really to to answer or to go into certain topics and all. Yeah, I think we all have this now. Some patients who feel in a in a certain moment in your consultation that it is going too deep, like they don't want to talk about it, or there the are particular topics they don't want to talk about it, mm -hmm. and that's why we always say make your questions as open as possible that the, the patient never feels obliged to give you, how do you say, very personal information. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't um, encourage them. If they would say, like, I have, I've been through incest in my life, right? We don't need to know all the details. Mm -hmm. We don't need all the details. Uh, and I know the different ways of coping up with that, and, and but if you feel you need to know more, even then you can make your question very, very um, uh, non-directive, mm -hmm. very open. Like, is there anything you can tell about this, or can you maybe say something about the impact this had on your life? Something like that, mm -hmm. without asking what happened, you know. <laughs> Yes, exactly. And I mean, yeah. this is also not the important part for us to to discuss the happenings as, as, such. as such. But wouldn't there often also be um, vital information to be found in, in intense, in maybe extreme uh, events, something that affected the patient deeply? Yes, but he will tell about it. But, you know, I have to tell you this. Some patients are irritated by nature. They mm -hmm. are irritable. Yeah. So that, would you say, will irritate them. Because yeah. for them, mm -hmm. 
Anybody says irritated. Yeah. Okay. You know the plant family, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but the horror for homeopaths, eh? this is real huh? yeah. And you, you know, this plant family, you know, Brionia. We know Brionia. Mm-hmm. Brionia is angered when questioned. Yeah. Now you go to homeopath, but you will be questioned. Uh-huh. So the result will be anger, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So the, uh, yes. those patients are helpful in the way that you just ask them these very gentle, open questions as you always do, because you're a very gentle homeopath. <laughs> <laughs> and you always treat your patients with compassion and empathy and care. And this patient is irritated by everything. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you very much. That's your remedy, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. And it gets even worse when he needs uh, when he's from the malaria, um, my essence. Right, yeah. Uh-huh. But <laughs> by themselves, they're complaining. Yeah. That's the my essence. They uh-huh. feel fortunate. So it's always me. Why me? You know? <laughs> Why are you asking me these questions? Well. <laughs> so they have some physical complaint. And whatever you ask, you know, they bite your nose. What do you think I feel, you know? <laughs> you ask him how this feels. <laughs> yeah, those are the if you if you happen to be a little bit you know insecure homeopath <laughs> and you get a colosynthesis in your practice, uh, well, it will be a challenge. Yeah, it will yeah. be a challenge, all right. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the remedy is very clear as long uh-huh. as you keep in mind that it's not you, you know, it's the patient. Mm-hmm. If the patient is irritated by your gentle questions, not because you try to irritate him. Yeah? And no, no matter how careful you are, you know, he, he reacts with irritation. It'd be like, a, like you know, he, his body language does ah, another silly question that I have to ask. <laughs> it doesn't need to be in the words, but you can see like, oh, how long will this take, this silly question? Uh-huh. Can you just give me the remedy, you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh-huh. Okay. No. So that's how they say, yeah, the patient can be offended, but it's then clearly in the patient and it's a rubric. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We shouldn't be intimidated. Yeah. We have those patients who say, uh, well, as, you doc- as you're not a doctor, you probably don't know, and then they say some Latin words. <laughs> they yeah. <laughs> not to know <laughs> about some, I don't know, whatever pathology they have. And if, if you do feel intimidated, it's you, but the impression the patient wanted to make on you was to intimidate you. Because who says to, to somebody you need help from, you probably don't know anything. I mean, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, or yeah. you don't know this disease or something. You can say, well, no, you know, I, I can look it up on the internet. Yeah. But the way people would say this is not because of something you did is because they try to intimidate you. Yeah. And isn't that also kind of contextual information? What um, if this is a, not a feeling that you commonly experience exactly. uh, dealing with people, with patients, if mm-hmm. if um, the states that you enter or the, the emotions that you get, that this is something that belongs to the patient. Of course. Another it's- source of information. Exactly. If you're intimidated by all your patients, it's you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. And, but of course, you know, it, it's every patient. Every patient helps us to learn something about ourselves. Mm-hmm. We learn as much as the patient, I think, by the interaction. So if we really try to, how do you say, to convince our patients that we know what we're doing and we're very professional etc that's our need you know yeah mm-hmm. if you feel you know what you're doing you don't have to try to convince the patient if you're yeah. not convinced, that's his problem you know yeah. mm-hmm. if you try to be um to be uh, nice that the patient would like you well that's that's your need you need to mm-hmm. feel like yeah mm-hmm. why would you be liked by your patient. You try to help him or her. Yeah. You don't need to be friends mm-hmm. with your patients. Otherwise, it's your need. Yeah. And when your need is in the way, then 
it's very hard to be neutral, to yeah. see the patient and to have all your attention <laughs> at the patient instead of your feelings and needs. Yeah. That's also part of the context, right? Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, so, now we know a lot more mm -hmm. about how to use information we get from the patient when he's talking on level three, when he's talking in stories on the emotional level. Um, you gave us uh, hints what to do with a message in the story. Um, also to look out for surprising touches mm -hmm. of his story if things are in the wrong order. Yeah. Or if um, the patient is adding a detail and expanding, elaborating a lot on mm -hmm. what would be normally details in a, what would not be the point of a story. Mm -hmm. For them it becomes a point then. And also um, how to deal with patients who don't talk much or to see the benefit of people not talking much. Exactly. And lastly, what, um, what it would tell us if there is an aggressive or an offended patient. Mm -hmm. So we will carry on next time with more, um, with more topics for now, for today. I thank you very much, Anne. I think that the time today. <laughs> Say again? I think that'll do for today. That'll do for today. Okay. Uh, more, for, more to digest and more to discuss next time. Okay, great. Have a good time. Bye. See you. Bye.